I own six of the most popular Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrances, so let's rank them and put them into a tier list. Before we get started, it is definitely worth noting that this list is only going to include six of the most popular, in my opinion, Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrances. It's going to be missing both of the scandals because I do not own them. It is going to be missing Le Beau Eau de Toilette because I do not own it. And it is going to be missing Le Mal Pride Eau de Toilette because I have not tried it and I do not own it. But with that being said, let's get into the tier list. Instead of being boring like everyone else and starting with the original Lamal, let's start with the first Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrance that I ever bought, and that is Ultraviolet. And I bought this because like everyone else, I looked up Jeremy Fragrance, top 10 most complimented, and this was number one on every one of his lists. The best Jean-Paul Gaultier together with the original DNA. And after seeing that as a young 16 year old guy, how are you not supposed to buy this? I mean, it's just too tempting, but honestly, this thing still bangs. I love it even in 2024. It smells amazing. Lavender, pear, vanilla. It's the Le Mal DNA just made more modern. It's super, super sweet. It's not something that's very refined. It's not the most well blended thing in the world, but that's not what it's trying to be. And I love it for what it is. If you're just trying to go out there, get compliments. If you just want to walk around, say at a club or at a party and just know that you're the best smelling guy there, Ultramail is what you should pick every single time from Jean-Paul Gaultier. For what it does, for, for its role in the Jean-Paul Gaultier line, it does its thing, okay? I'm gonna have to put this in the high B tier. Rating wise, I would give it an 8.7 out of 10. It is unfortunate for Jean-Paul Gaultier Ultramel that after 9 p.m. exists because it does smell about 85% similar to me and it performs almost as well and it costs less than half the price, which is pretty tough on this guy. But if you can afford it, I still always say to get the original because there's nothing like the original, okay? Look at the bottle, it is so cool. After 9 p.m. is a fantastic fragrance, but I'm still taking Ultramel every single day of the week, and you should too, if you can afford it. 32% of people who watch School of Scent are subscribed to us. If you guys wanna see our channel grow, to really help us out, click subscribe. Let's get that number to 40%, thank you. Next, let's talk about the original Lamal. It can't run for much longer. This was actually the second Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrance I ever bought. And one reason I bought it is because it is so damn affordable compared to all the other ones. And that is something that is not talked about enough. If you're a younger guy and you wanna get your hands on the Jean-Paul Gaultier sweet vanilla, Tonka bean lavender DNA, but you can't afford, you know, the new power, the new Lamal elixir. Just get Lamal original. It is still a fantastic fragrance as long as you are prepared for something that is a little bit old school smelling. I like to describe this thing as a barbershop turned sexy or an older gentleman who's still trying to be cool. That is the original Lamar, and that uh, one reason for that is because the lavender note is super, super overpowering in my opinion. I'm not a huge lavender guy, so naturally this isn't my favorite smelling scent in the world. The opening though, I absolutely love because you get a super fresh bergamot. It's a lot fresher than a lot of the other Jean-Paul Gaultiers in the Lamal line. It works best for me as a versatile all year round scent, but it is still probably better in the winter. This thing can still be used at clubs. It would still pull compliments in 2024. It's just that DNA. This thing is a timeless fragrance. I'm gonna slot it in to C tier, but make it clear. A lot of people are always like, why are you hating on the original Lamal? I am not hating on it. It is not a bad fragrance. Let's put that in all caps. It is not bad. This fragrance still is still good in 2024. There's just better options now from Jean-Paul Gaultier, in my opinion. I'm gonna rate it a 7.6 out of 10. And the C tier, I think, is perfect for the original Lamar. Next, moving on to the more fresh summertime options from Jean-Paul Gaultier, we have Le Beau Le Parfum. I much prefer this over the original EDT. Let's just get that out of the way. There is a reason why I own this one and not the original EDT. The heavy, dense, tropical coconut pina colada vibe from this fragrance is absolutely beautiful. This is still one of the best fragrance openings I've ever ever smelled from any fragrance, honestly. Just the way the coconut, the tonka bean, and the vanilla come in is just so refreshing, but it's so dense and rich at the same time, which makes it so versatile. You can use this for any day of the year. Absolutely stunning fragrance. Performance as well is definitely above average. I get eight to nine hours longevity with strong projection, actually, especially for a summer fragrance. This one for me 
is really hot in Australia right now. I've been reaching for this thing probably once every two to three days. And when you have that many fragrances behind you, that is an impressive stat. I have no issue slotting Le Beau Le Parfum straight into the A tier. Let's go A tier, probably on the lower end of A tier, but it's an amazing fragrance. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. Yes, nine out of 10, perfect for Le Beau Le Parfum. If you want a versatile year round scent, this is probably the best offering from Jean Paul Gaultier. Speaking of summertime scents from Jean Paul Gaultier, the brand new Paradise Gardens, which I was blessed enough to get two days ago now, so I'm still testing it out. So my rating and stuff of this will probably change but it really exceeded my expectations. You get a beautiful minty green freshness off the top. It's a lot less dense and rich than Le Bola Parfum, which is nice in its own way. You know, the coconut, it's, it's got coconut definitely, but it's more aired out. It's a more kind of, it's definitely more of an airy fragrance. It's not so bogged down on your skin, which makes it better for a hot summer's day, but not as good if you're looking, you know, for the colder weather scent. This is not gonna be, not gonna be as good. Performance though, for me, is a big letdown. I went on to Fragrantica, and a lot of people are saying that the longevity is fantastic, the projection is pretty good. I just, on my skin, I just can't agree with that because after two hours, it unfortunately does become a skin scent on my skin. Longevity as well, it's only around six to seven hours. If it smelled better, this fragrance would 100% be in the A tier, but because of the poor performance, I can't put it above a B tier. The smell, smell wise, it could be A, but it has to be B because we're factoring in performance as well. For what it's worth though, this is by far my favorite Jean-Paul Gaultier bottle design. Whoever created this, they were cooking. They were cooking with this bottle design. It is also worth noting that I do much prefer the opening of this fragrance versus the dry down. Some people say that the dry down smells like Versace Eros. I don't get that at all. It's just very, it's just very boring compared to the opening. The coconut kind of goes away and I get a very like sandalwood, vanilla heavy fragrance. It just doesn't really stand out. But the opening for the first hour or so is just beautiful. Rating out of 10, I'm gonna give it an 8.6 out of 10 for Le Beau Paradise Gardens. Moving on to the Jean-Paul Gaultier that probably got the most hype overall. This fragrance is one of the best fragrances of all time. This thing basically ran the entirety of fragrance TikTok in 2023, and that is Le Mal Elixir. When I first got it, it was by far my favorite Jean Paul Gaultier, but since then, I haven't really worn it much, and the reason for that is that this thing is so, so sweet. To me, it's a little bit sickeningly sweet. It kinda, it always gives me a headache, actually. But note-wise, Straight away, you just get the lavender, honey, and vanilla combo. This is super, super vanilla heavy. I feel like in terms of just pure compliment factor, mass appeal factor, La Mala Elixir is actually the best out of the entire line. Every time I wear this, I just know my chance of getting a compliment is actually pretty good because people just love the smell of this stuff. And because the performance is so good, particularly the projection, the scent trail it leaves behind you is honestly like nothing I've ever seen. Putting my bias aside and just for not loving how sweet it is, objectively, I can put this fragrance in the A tier without a problem and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Also, the, the year it was released, there were a lot of other big brands like YSL that released myself. Uh, Aqua de Joe released the Parfum version that just weren't super innovative. A lot of people felt that were a bit boring, but then Jean-Paul Gaultier came with this bad boy, a gold, beautiful bottle, you know, really unique notes for a designer fragrance. And you got you got to give them that your flowers, you know, for that kind of innovation in 2023. And all these big brands are putting out so many boring fragrances. La Mala Elixir basically just saved the day. It was like Superman of the fragrance um, industry. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10, and objectively, it's gonna go into the A tier. However, I just don't wear it as much as pretty much every other Jean Paul Gaultier fragrance, but I'm gonna be the bigger man and put those biases aside. The final Jean Paul Gaultier fragrance that we are gonna be ranking today is Le Mail Parfum, and the reason I have saved it till last is because, as the old saying goes, you save the best till last. Le Mail Parfum, you are going straight into the S tier, my friend. The reason why is because to me, it is just the most 
well blended and the most unique smelling Jean-Paul Gaultier because of that beautiful powdery iris note that you get. You still get the sweet, sexy, mass appealing DNA, but the iris note just gives us some class, gives us some sophistication. I feel like this would be the perfect date night fragrance in any man's collection. Regardless of how young or old you are, I feel like this fragrance can be worn by basically anyone. The lavender, it's not super overdone. It's not super heavy like the original. The iris is blended beautifully. It also isn't super strong and the vanilla Vanilla is done so well, it just smells like well, like a well blended fragrance. You get what you pay for. The performance as well, I love what they did because you get a super long lasting fragrance, about 10 hours, but the projection, it just isn't super in your face. This honestly does just feel like the perfectly created date night fragrance. So like I said, this is the only Jean Paul Gaultier in my opinion that deserves the STS spot rating out of 10. I'm gonna go with a 9.4. This is the Jean Paul Gaultier that I by far reach for the most. Even during the summertime, I love the smell of it so much that I always grab it. I absolutely love it. All the other Jean-Paul Gaultier fans are amazing. This one is just as close to perfect as it gets. That is gonna wrap it up for my final ranking of the six most popular Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrances. Let me know in the comments which is your favorite Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrance. And if you agree with my tier list, I know it's gonna be super controversial. That's what happens when the fragrances are so good, everyone is gonna have a different opinion. And that, you know, I love seeing everyone's different opinion. Mine's obviously the right one though, but like it's still cool seeing all your guys' opinions on them. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, share, um, and yeah, have a good rest of your day. And go buy yourself some Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrances.